Okay, we're talking Star Trek The Original Series, Friday's Child after this. Hello out there, I'm the oldest nerd. And Friday's Child is one of these episodes where the Enterprise goes to a planet that has people that are still using knives and rocks and making treaties with them. Uh, later in The Next Generation, they said that the Prime Directive said that you could only deal with a planet who's uh, at least warp capable. And while they say they can't interfere with how uh, a local planet is run, uh, it's interesting that traditional people like these uh, that we find uh, in Friday's Child are aware of space flight and people coming from other planets and bargaining for their ore, which they're still just calling rocks. Uh, besides that, though, uh, it's um, kind of interesting to see Julie Newmar in a Star Trek episode. Before this was in, oh goodness, what was it called? My Living Doll, uh, where she played a robot. It was a comedy but still a, a, a reasonably big name at that time. And there were some fairly big names that went through Star Trek uh, beyond people who would become stars later, like Terry Garr, for instance. But uh, this more like Jane Wyatt, who was already established uh, in uh, movies and television. And uh, in this case, so was Julie Newmar. Anyway, I find Julie Newmar's role in this uh reminiscent of Daenerys Targaryen and uh, the, um, in the, um, what is it, the House of the Dragon, uh, the other Targaryen women. Uh, it's, it's an interesting thing, especially coming from the 60s, where there is a, um, a story of a woman who is not completely submissive. And in Star Trek, especially, it seems that uh, that's the case, except, of course, on the ship. On the ship, you have uh, regular officers, but uh, usually they go on these planets, and they're either the high priestess, uh, some kind of royalty, or some kind of possession. And, and while there is some... Um, talk of this and and the uh, first female character they show on the planet who's offering fruit to the captain uh, is is obviously that sort. Uh, they do give a, a pretty good part for Julie Newmar. Uh, this uh, is an interesting thing where uh, McCoy uh, trying to examine her is slapped multiple times until he finally slaps her and she lets him go ahead to do what he needs to do. Uh, might not be considered um, very proper these days, and probably wasn't then, but uh, it made a good line later uh, where Kirk comes in and says, how are you able to get her to agree to let you touch her? Uh, was it some kind of happy pill? And the doctor said, no, right cross. And he said, I'm going to add it to my uh, list of skills. Anyway, uh, the story itself is that of a leader, Tier in this case, who uh, is challenged by a subordinate who then wins, and he becomes Tier, and he wants to um, murder the wife of the previous Tier who is carrying his child. That would be the next Tier, which would be uh, the child. And so, uh, of course, uh, Kirk and Spock and Bones take it upon themselves to um, violate uh, the customs of the people and take her in the mountains to let her have the baby and eventually uh, get um, the, the new um, Tier born. Uh, however, they mix in with uh, uh, Klingons, and uh, the uh, uh, the Klingons are also bargaining for the ore, but uh, they show them using kind of underhanded tactics, but uh, not completely. There is a certain argument the Klingons have that uh, does have some traction to it. Nevertheless, we have a... Uh, a B story going on to where uh, the Enterprise is being called away on a distress call, and uh, it takes a little while before they realize that it was a ruse, and um, Scotty is uh, uh, 
doing all due diligence, but uh, after they've decided that it was a hoax and start to go back, uh, there's another distress call. And Scotty says there's an old saying on earth, fool me once, shame on you, fool me twice, shame on me. Of which Chekhov responds, yes, that it was originated in Russia. And then gives a knowing smile as if to, uh, it gives me a different idea of, of some of Chekhov's things that were Russian, that he wasn't exactly serious about it. He just did it to jab people with. And uh, on that level, it kind of works. Otherwise, uh, I find this a kind of a forgettable show, despite the fact that uh, DC Fontana wrote it. Uh, it had some good location shooting and uh, different things you could do with the communicator that would cause rocks to explode. But beyond that, uh, I found it to be a kind of a fair to Midland episode. Uh, but, you know, once again, uh, characterizations were pretty good. And like I say, if Julie Newmar hadn't been in it, I wouldn't recommend watching it at all. So uh, there you have it, uh, Friday's Child. If you would like to subscribe to the channel, please do. And of course, uh, leave your comments below. And we do these retro reviews on Tuesday and Wednesday. And then we have... Um, Strange New Worlds right now on Friday. So that's uh, where our reviews are going right now. When uh, Strange New Worlds is over and assuming that there's not another show that comes on right afterwards, uh, I'm thinking about uh, starting up reviews on Babylon 5, kind of comparing that to Deep Space Nine, which many have claimed that was kind of um, a, a ripoff of Babylon 5. And uh, there are uh, some evidentiary stories on this. One is that uh, um, Stravinsky, who was the producer of Babylon 5, first took the offer to, um, uh, first took the show to uh, Paramount and gave them a complete story outline. And a lot of that went in Deep Space Nine. Now, my opinion is, of course, Deep Space Nine has uh, uh, better acting in a lot of places in Babylon 5, but Babylon 5 had some things for it too, and uh, we would talk about that uh, somewhere down the line. I would say uh, in a couple of months from now, we'll see what we can do about that. But uh, that's, that's what we have to talk about this time. Uh, we'll see you next time, and until then, don't go far.